Hello and welcome to Jennifer Natters. I'm Jennifer and this is my Knitting and Nattering video podcast. Today is the is Friday the 2nd of October, which means it is two weeks since I've done my last podcast. I have finally managed to do one. Two weeks. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you new viewers. Thank you for anyone who's returning. Hi. Uh, if you did watch the last one, you know that I hurt my wrist. Um, I believe it was when I was the rear tire on my bicycle, formerly my husband's bicycle, went completely flat over the summer. So I'd finally gotten around to changing it. And then I couldn't use my wrist. Shortly thereafter, I can use it again. For a while, like I couldn't do pinching motions. So I really haven't done much <laughs> since last we spoke, but I do have a few little things. Um, and it turns out that while I couldn't hold knitting needles, I could hold something and crochet. Um, the pinching motion wasn't as bad or didn't hurt. Um, so I've done a few little crochet things. I am not very good at crochet. Every time I want to crochet something, I have to look up how to do every type of stitch. They're like, do this. And I'm like, let me Google what that is. So I'm not, I'm not a good crocheter. I'm not a fast crocheter, which I think is a lot of what helped also was um, being able to hold it. It was a different hand gesture, so it wasn't hurting in the way that knitting needles were hurting. So I could just do a little slow crocheting. Um, so that's what I have to show you today. Hi! Um, if you don't know me, my name is Jennifer. I am an American living in northern-ish Scotland in Inverness. And I don't know if you can see outside, but it is a glorious, gorgeous sunny day. I've got the window open. Um, it was actually, I'm wearing my sweater vest. Uh, this is, it's an Isolde Teague pattern. I can't remember the name off the top of my head really bad with pattern names. If I don't write it down for today, then I don't have it. But I was wearing this and I had on a cardigan over it. And then I had my raincoat over that because this is Scotland. And before we'd gotten very far at all, I'd already taken off my coat. And then on the way home, I had to take off my sweater or my jumper, the cardigan as well. And so yeah, uh, here in the shade of the trees, it's a bit cool, but I do have the window open. So if you can hear things, I'm sorry. It's hard to believe how warm it feels outside in the sunshine because even just yesterday it was like 10 degrees. Um, there was one day, I think Saturday, I woke up and it was only a, a degree Celsius outside. Um, so yeah, it's a bit surprising that it warmed up and I'm kind of sad that my sweater weather has gone away for a bit. Um, I'm completely team. I mean, I like sunshine, but I also want to be all cozy in my sweaters that I've knit. My pullovers and my cardigans and my fair isle vest. Uh, so yeah, things I have made. I started with a little crochet candy corn. I'd actually ordered yarn. Um, this is Drops Merino. I wrote it down. Drops Baby Merino, which is kind of a sport weight. And I had ordered two balls of each color because my neighbors just had a baby and I wanted to knit a little candy corn colored cardigan for them. If you do not know what candy corn are, this is a little candy corn. I ordered some from a South American food importer. Ta da! I got two bags. They were very expensive. They are absolutely delicious. And anyone who tells you otherwise, well, more for me. Um, but they had gone, last year the neighbors had gone to Florida and done all the, you know, Disney World, Harry Potter World, this was before everyone knew how bad, anyway, Harry Potter World and, um, Universal Studios and all that touristy stuff that, as an American, every British person you meet will tell you about their trip to Florida to go to Disney World. It is just a thing when you introduce, when you are introduced to them, they will spontaneously tell you about their trip. Um, so anyway, they went to Disney World last year and she came home with a jar of candy corn and she was just like, 
this is the best stuff ever. Um, so I thought they hadn't known or were not willing to disclose the gender of the baby that they have now had. I still haven't gone over to talk to them because Scotland's in kind of more of a lockdown phase. Um, but I thought a candy corn outfit for a late September baby would be very cute. And then I couldn't knit. So I haven't. I did try. At one point I thought like, like I even wedged a knitting needle into my arm brace so I wasn't having to hold it. And I, I couldn't. It hurt too much. Um, but I made, this is my first candy corn. And this one is a little understuffed and I didn't put any anything in the bottom to weigh it down. So that's just the yarn held singly by my first attempt. And you can kind of see, I mean, it's not the densest fabric. So my next one, I held the yarn double and this is a much firmer fabric. And it's just, I mean, it's the exact same everything. It just came out bigger because it's bulkier yarn. And then I put some beans in the bottom to help weigh it down. So I made these two and my children were squabbling over them. So I made a third one and my husband claimed it and it now lives. One of these was supposed to be for the baby. Um, but this, so yeah, everybody, everybody wants a candy corn and I have started, I'm almost done with my third my fourth candy cane, my third big one. Um, so I'm just gonna keep making candy corn as long as it's fun. And having made three candy corn, I then turned my attention to, uh, sorry, the candy corn pattern is by Blue Rabbit Toys and I got that off Etsy. There's lots of free candy corn patterns out there, um, but I, wanted to support the designer of whatever pattern I was going to use and since I don't really know what I'm doing I figured a paid for pattern would have more hand holding. It did not. I mean it's a completely basic because you're just going around and increasing and then decreasing um, but the pat you know I had to look up every term. There were no explanations of what any particular stitch was. So it's a very good pattern for a beginner, but you will need to look up how to do all the things. So if you just want to know when to change colors and not have to worry about that kind of stuff, then I recommend the pattern. If you want hand holding, then it's not really going to do anything for you. So my next one is a pumpkin. And this is West Yorkshire Spinners Air Valley DK which I had in stash. Um, I'd got it a bunch of autumnal colors as a sign up bonus for Knit Now magazine a few years back. Um, and so I have made a little pumpkin. And this is from the Trio of Pumpkins by Zoe Bartley. And this is a free pattern. It was just the cutest one. And again, you crochet a ball and then you smoosh it flat and do the string around. And then there's a little stem and a little tendril. This, this is the smallest one and the smallest one does have instructions for a little flat leaf, which I made, but then it's more like an apple leaf. It is not, um, pumpkin leaves are more like a grape leaf, almost a, um, uh, maple leaf or a sycamore leaf shape. It's not a little flat apple leaf. So I made it and then I was like, no, I can't really put that on my pumpkin. So I just made a smaller version of the tendril from the medium sized pumpkin. Um, and this one, again, I stuffed it and then I put a bunch of beans in. And then when I sewed the stem on, the beans are on this side. So. I mean, it still weighs the pumpkin down, but it's not where it was supposed to be. And I love that little pumpkin. And now that I've made that pumpkin, I kind of want to just do pumpkins and not do candy corns anymore. But the other one I showed you that I'm working on is going to be for the baby. Um, and then I need to either decide 
if I'm up to knitting, I was going to do like a little baby cardigan and the candy corn, or if I want to crochet maybe a little blanket using the rest of the, the drops, mer, drops baby merino that I have for that. So that's my finished objects. Um, works in progress. The only other thing I worked on, I suppose I did my, my black work stitching a little bit. Um, but as my hand has been feeling better, I have started doing a tiny bit of knitting, like just a little bit at night at bedtime and going slow. So this is my simple summer tweed top down v-neck. That is the pattern name by Heidi Kermer. Kermer? I'm sorry, I, I should really, I should look up how to pronounce that. And since I'm almost done with this, the odds are I never will. Um, this is a free pattern that is only available on Ravelry. I'm sorry, it kind of predates the, the whole Ravelry being awful thing. Um, so, and this is just last time I spoke. The stitch marker is not where I was. The stitch marker, this, I don't even know. I was nine and a half balls in out of 10 balls that I had bought. And I finished the ninth ball and then using the 10th ball, I picked up the neckline. It's just a rolled neckline, rolled cuff, and then I'll do a rolled hem. So I'm on to ball 10 and I just have a tiny bit I'd say this is probably 20, 25 grams, they're 50 gram balls. So I only have a tiny bit left and I will be done. And this yarn, which has been discontinued, this is Sublime Evie, which is a cotton, a poofy cotton yarn that I really like working with and I really like wearing. Um, I will be able to wear it and I will be snugly. And I have a different, pullover that I knit in the ice blue colorway of this yarn that I never wear. It was my sadness costume for Halloween one year. I never wear it because I'm worried my children will touch me with spaghetti hands or ketchup fingers or chocolate smoochies. So I never wear it. And with this one, I won't have to worry quite so much because it's not going to show the dirt quite as much. Um, but yeah almost finished with that and I really want to work on it but I also know like I can't knit too much or I might trigger another flare up in my hand um so trying to be really cautious with that so that's what I've worked on since last we've seen each other which brings me to acquisitions and this is not going to be in any particular order I ordered this skein of gorgeous orangey, um, sorry, Catherine, Catherine got her hands on it. And this is the Oyster Catcher's Beak and Feet. And this is Ripple Crafts um, in her Reliable Sock Yarn. And I thought this would make a very cute pair of pumpkin socks. And this is another Ripple's Crafts yarn. And I thought cuffs, heels, and toes in the green for a pumpkin-y effect. It is already October and I have not finished either of the two socks I was working on in September. Having not finished those, the chances of me making it onto this are very low this year, but pumpkin socks. Um, I mean, I started a pair of Halloween socks two years ago and then finished them last year. Once Halloween was fairly well done and gone, I just set them aside pulled them out again in September the following year and finished them. So I don't mind setting these aside for a while. Excuse me. Except in as much as they are, it, I would have really liked some pumpkin socks. Um, so that was the first thing that came. And the next thing, I won the summer knit along for the Giddy Yarns that Giddy Yarns did in her podcast. And she sent me a little card and I won a sock blank. I've never had a sock blank before, so I'm super excited. Um, this one was just a one-off colorway that she did playing 
I guess it was her first sock blank that she dyed. So it starts with this kind of mottly dark purple in the white and then goes through a brighter purple, like a bit of fuchsia, and then the, the brighter purple and then into the blues and the teals and then the teals get a bit lighter and then they go back out through the fuchsia and the dark purple. And if you don't know, this is just a machine knit strip and then you can just get the end and it unravels. Um, that was the inside when she sent it to me, but then when I rolled it up, now it's the outside. So you just yank the yarn and you can unravel it and you can either skein it up and wash it and then knit from that or um, to get all the little kinky boos out. Let's see. Doot, 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 doot. Kinky boos. See, the yarn is all kinked up. Um, making the yarn smooth again will give a more even gauge for knitting something else, but a lot of people just knit straight from the sock blank and maybe go down a needle size to account for the fact that the yarn is already all kind of twisted up, so you're going to get a slightly looser gauge than you would normally do. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do, because it's going to be a while before I get around to this, but I've got lots of time to decide, so hopefully I will get to that. I'm so excited to have a sock blank. Uh, I mean, I love winning, and that was a huge yay, and I won the sock blank, and I'm so excited about that. I'd seen it, and it's such gorgeous colors that I was just absolutely over the moon. And my next acquisition is the Lonely Knitter. Now I'm trying to think, what does she call her yarn? She does Crafter's Balm, and then she just started dyeing yarn, and I can't remember what she's calling her yarn label, but it's on her Crafter Balm website. And she does pre-orders for a <laughs> Scrappy Blankets minis and they come just these are just one off playing around with colors doot, 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 doot. so these are the colors for October and signups are open for October these are the ones for September signups are open for October until the middle of the month so these are just little I think I got the 10 gram pack uh yes I uh, know 10 times 5 grams that's what I got this time last time I got the 10 gram pack so there's a couple different sets and she just, I lost one, but I will find it in a bit. So those have come and those are to go into my scrappy blanket, which I'm not currently working on because I hurt my wrist and I can't knit. And so yeah, we will, hopefully I'll get back to that. This has kind of been a sobering thing for me about all that, the yarn was all paid for before I hurt my wrist, so I'm not buying yarn at a time when I cannot knit. I'm also not buying patterns right now. I have so much yarn I want to use. I have so many patterns I want to knit. Um, so I think I'm gonna work on that for a little bit. This has kind of been a stash scare. Like if I really, you know, if my, my wrist never heals, how will I get through this? When you're knitting a lot, you can tell yourself you need a lot of yarn. Um, so yeah, we'll see. How that goes. Um, this is not a, a cold sheep, as they say, moment for me. I'm not giving up yarn. I'm just kind of changing, going a bit slower, and hopefully that will heal. Um, so yeah, that's... Oh, I have one more acquisition. It's still in my pocket, I think. Is it still in my pocket? Where are you? Oh no, where is it? This just came in the post today, and this is my one purchase from the virtual, was it Yorkshire Yarn Festival? It's one I, It's one that's down in England that I would never, ever, ever get to go to, but it was online. And this is the Stay Home Cats. Is that focusing? Anyway, there's two little kitties 
in the window and there's one in that window and these are the cats who are staying home and they are not going out and they are not spreading coronavirus and if they did go out they would wear masks and you could get this either in the peach or the blue and there's cats or dogs so this is my one my one Yorkshire yarn festival assuming it was Yorkshire over the weekend <sighs> honestly it's all just England down there there's and then it's England um, I'm pretty vague about the Scottish borders too in fact I'm vague about everything except Edinburgh, Glasgow, Inverness, and a few little towns on the train between them. That's that's what I know about the UK. We don't drive, we don't explore much. So yeah, my geography, not the best. Um, Yarndale? Was it Yarndale, not Yorkshire Yarnfest? Yarndale sounds better. Um, again, somewhere down in England. And the other thing I made, I think I mentioned I had started this for the last podcast, is this little project bag. It's not a little project bag. It's intended to be a big project bag. Like the last one I mentioned, I have sewn a channel for a drawstring, but I have not. I've ordered things from shops that would have drawstrings, but I've never thought to order a drawstring for either of my bags. And this one, I made pockets. And then I sewed them in inside out. And so after a week, I unripped the whole thing and then sewed it back correctly. So it has, let's see, here's a pocket and here's a slightly smaller pocket and here's a slightly bigger pocket and here's a slightly bigger pocket. And I was so impressed because I got, that's where the pockets end, but that is also, so you can see a little bit of pocket, that is also, I put it in exactly the right place to be the bottom corner of the bag, the flat bottom of the bag. And I was so upset when I had turned it right side out and realized they were inside out and that I couldn't reach the pockets and that I absolutely should have realized it was inside out but anyway um, it is lightly lined but it does not it is not a firm bag uh, yeah it's interfaced but it's not like padded or anything whereas if you pad it then it would stand up better on its own but I love this little this kind of spooky Halloween fabric which is a bit subtle and because I love over the top Halloween stuff, but I also sometimes love some slightly less obnoxious Halloween stuff. And I say obnoxious with all the love in my heart because, as I said, I love over the top Halloween stuff, including candy corn. Um, so yeah, that's that catches me up on acquisitions and sewing. I did start another my other Montrose top, and then all I have left to do is the cuffs and the hem and when I went to try it on I'm like this kind of fits a little weird and I realized that I cut out I cut out the um the new size in the front because the previous one I'd done a larger size with a smaller cup and that was completely wrong so I did this size smaller with the largest cup and it fits so much better but then everything else just seemed a bit big and I realized I cut out half the pieces in the smaller size and half the pieces in the larger size, which explains why I was having so much trouble getting my notches to match up. And I was thinking um, that I had cut them out badly or that the, like the fabric had gone slightly on the bias or no, it's because I did, I cut out half the pattern pieces one size and half the pattern pieces the other size. Um, I'd also added like almost two inches to the hem and an inch to the sleeves because the hem on the other one had been it's a bit short and now it's super long which I think because I have the proper cup size the fabric isn't pulling up to get over the extra terrain 
And so I'm gonna trim off the extra at the bottom. Um, the sleeves I think I'll just fold under or maybe cut a little off. I didn't do as much extra on the sleeves, but yeah, so I'm almost done with that. And I could have finished today, but I thought I'd podcast instead. Um, that is sewing news. And it's a really, the thing with that shirt is it's a really thin fabric and it's very summery. And like I probably could have worn it today with a, something over it. And it's completely a seasonally inappropriate thing to make. And yet it is still what I had fabric for to make. So I need to get better at sewing and then I'll move on. Like I, I knew it was a learning project and it's also a good sizing project because I have other patterns from the company Cashmeret and they're all cut to the same block. So if I get my size right in one, theoretically, um, you know, like that should be my top measurements. Like, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of why I went ahead and made that one, even though it is now seasonally inappropriate. Uh, family news, we're all doing well. We're ticking right along. Um, Christina did ask me to teach her how to crochet and I did tell her that I'm not very good at it, but we watched some videos together and she wanted to make a crochet headband. So she has been doing, it's all just single crochet, um, you know, do a long strip. And then when it's long enough, I presume we didn't even get that far in the instruction. She's just doing single crochets now. I have a lot more patience for teaching crochet than I do for teaching knitting. Because um, when I'm knitting, I kind of just want to knit. But when I'm crocheting, it's a lot easier to put it down and pick it up and I'm going slow anyway. So I I have patience to sit there with her and she'll do, you know, did I do this right? Yes, she did that right. Did I do this right? Yes, she did that right. Like I have the patience for that suddenly with crochet. Whereas I did not have the patience to check every stitch with knitting. Um, and Christina really doesn't, she doesn't like making mistakes. It makes her really frustrated and really grumpy and we're working on you know like it's it's okay it's something we're working on that it is you do have to make mistakes to learn that is part of the learning process no one picks something up and is just instantly really good at it um but that is kind of her bet noir in life so we will see if she sticks with it and in book news i keep meaning to talk about what i'm watching or what i'm reading and i almost always forget but we made it. Book news. I have read one really good series and one really good book recently. And the series, which has been around for a while, is Murderbot by Martha Wells. And it's, I've written this down, All Systems Red is the first one. Rogue Protocol is the second one. Artificial Conditions is the third one. And Network Cafe is the fourth one, two, three, four, the fourth one. And then I guess the fifth book is in pre-order to come out next spring. Um, they are novellas, so they are on, they're only, you know, like 200 pages each. And they are being sold at full book prices, so know that going in. Um, they are so good. I was in love with Murderbot, which is what, it's set in a future world science fiction series about a cyborg, a cloned cyborg, who is a security unit. Um, and apparently they are absolutely terrifying and everybody thinks if they go rogue, they're gonna kill everyone. And this particular one hacked its own software and is now technically a rogue, but it hacked its own software and then instead of going on a murderous rampage, it just started downloading television serials, uh, long running dramas and all sorts of stuff. And so it likes watching those and is always just like, can we finish doing whatever we're doing so I can go back and sit in my little bunk in my little broom closet and just watch. It's addicted to all of these um, television serials. And then things start going wrong. And it turns out that as much as Murderbot's like, oh, I hate people, Murderbot also really just, every time Murderbot encounters people, it's kind of like, you're my people and I'm gonna take care of you and make sure you all stay safe. So um, yeah, Murderbot, 
is delightful. Murderbot presents as autistic in a lot of way. Murderbot is uncomfortable with direct eye contact. Murderbot doesn't want to be touched. All sorts of things like that. Um, Murderbot is snarky as all get out. And you just, you, yeah, I love Murderbot. And I wish I had that Murderbot as a friend. Murderbot is what the robot cyborg sec unit calls itself. Uh, it is its secret name that it doesn't share with people. So yeah, Murderbot is delightful. That's by Martha Wells. And then the other one, which I just, just came out this week, is Naomi Novak's latest. And I love Naomi Novak. She's got the Temeraire series, which is the Napoleonic Wars, except in addition to fighting on ships, they also fight on dragons. Um, so that was her debut series. And then she's got two standalones, which are based on Eastern European fairy tales. So she's got... Oh, I just forgot the first one. Um, they're not, it's not a series, they're standalones. The second one is Spinning Silver, which obviously is a Rumpelstiltskin inspired tale. Um, the first one's about trees, why can't I remember what it's called? They're both really, really good. This new one is my favorite thing she's written that I've read. Um, I've read all of her published work, but she does have a lot of fan fiction. That's, she got started in fan fiction. Um, and I love it. This is another Eastern European inspired story and it's the first book in the Scholomancy series. And Scholomancy, I guess, is a traditional, it is a folk legend staple, um, a magical school for wizards and witches and sorcerers. And obviously there will be comparisons between it and Harry Potter. It is amazing. It is magical and it is delightful and the there are no teachers at the school and the incentive to take the classes and learn is to not die. It is all about not dying. Um, in order to graduate at the end you have to pass through a hall that is full of monsters. The monsters keep trying to crawl into the school and eat people because apparently teenage magicians are little crunchy marshmallows of magical yummy goodness um, and they can't protect themselves yet so they just are the most amazingly tasty thing you could ever imagine for magical monsters so and they're the wizards and wizards you know the, the powers that be built this school and it's only connected to the real world through the graduation hall. Um, so the kids wind up having like a, a one in four chance of survival rather than, uh, you know, well, they were all gonna get eaten. It betters their chances of survival to be in there. Um, and we're following a third year. So she's got one more year before she graduates a third year sorceress who has no friends and no one to guard her back and no alliances and everybody thinks she's horrible and scary and they don't realize that she's actually super powerful but her affinity everybody has something they're good at her affinity is for spells of mass destruction so she refuses to use them because she doesn't want to be an evil witch, but she has the superpowers and no friends and she's super snarky and everybody's dying all on every side. And yeah, um, the book opens and she's just been saved by this one hero type who has an affinity for killing monsters. And so everybody wants to be his friend and he saved lots and lots of people. But because he's saved so many people, the monsters are extra hungry. They haven't been able to eat. Um, so everybody's worried that come graduation, it's going to be extra bad and no one will survive. And they're mad at him. And so there's this whole thing. And it is delightful. It is 
wonderful and I can't believe there's only one book and I really want more books but yeah Skullmancy uh, Deadly Education by Naomi Novak I am absolutely enthralled so those are my two book recommendations for this week I watched Enola Holmes on Netflix and it is delightful and I watched Staged which I believe was a BBC thing but is currently on Netflix and that's David Tennant and Martin Sheen rehearsing for a play except it's locked down so they're having to do the whole process over Zoom and that was a lot of fun I really enjoyed that so two book reviews two streaming Netflix reviews and that's kind of everything I have to say this week so I hope you're well um the world continues to be on fire Trump announced last night that he's tested positive for coronavirus, but that's just one more thing to worry about. Not so much, I don't know, people don't believe him, people do believe him. Is he really sick? Is he not really sick? The UK has so many cases even here in Scotland, people don't want to wear their masks. Stay home, be a cat, stay home. Talk to you next time, bye.